Hi, welcome. This is Clement the Elector. In this video, I will show you how to build a software defined FM radio receiver. Software defined radio, also known as SDR, is about modulating and demodulating radio signals in software. Instead of having special electronic circuitry to do this, like a mixer or a demodulator, SDR uses software instead. Of course, there is some hardware involved in turning analog signals into digital and vice versa, but that's all you need. Please note that to keep things simple, in this video we will limit ourselves to receiving radio signals only, but most of the presented stuff is also valid for transmitting. SDR can work both ways. SDR offers many advantages over analog radio. First of all, SDR understands every modulation technique you can think of and more. This means that with SDR you can not only listen to AM and FM radio, but you can also do Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or decode digital TV or DAP or ham radio stuff. Whatever you like. SDR can do this because it implements the modulation or demodulation technique in software and software is easy to change. Because everything is done in software, SDR can also do things that are very difficult or even impossible to do with electronic components only. A second advantage of SDR is that you need only one piece of hardware to do all of this. You don't need a separate FM receiver and a Wi-Fi receiver and a digital TV receiver and what not. SDR uses the same front end for everything. This device is an analog to digital converter or ADC with an antenna that turns analog radio signals into digital signals that can be processed with a computer. For transmitting a digital to analog converter is needed. SDR front ends come in many flavors and you must choose one that fits your budget and desires. The more expensive the converter, the more you can do with it. I will use the HEC RF1 from Great Scott Gadgets. This is not the cheapest SDR front end, but it supports receiving and transmitting and it works up to 6 GHz. Also not unimportant, it is supported by many SDR software platforms like GNU Radio, SDR Sharp and SDR++. And this is another cool thing of SDR, a lot of it is open source and open hardware created by a large community of enthusiasts. They design and publish schematics for front ends and develop software tools and algorithms for SDR applications. HackRF1 is open source too and the design files are available on GitHub. For our first SDR project we need an SDR front end and SDR software. I will use HackRF1 as the front end with an 88 cm telescopic antenna. I use a GNU Radio for the software part. Actually I will use a GNU Radio Companion aka GRC which is the graphical interface for GNU Radio. GNU Radio is available for Linux, uh, Windows and Mac OS and so chances are that your computer can run it too. It even runs on a Raspberry Pi but I will use Windows 10. GRC is a graphical programming tool which lets you create a radio application without doing any real programming. You just drag and drop blocks on a canvas that you interconnect with virtual wires. The programming remains limited to configuring the blocks. GRC comes with a large library of blocks for creating all sorts of modulation and demodulation schemes. We start with a blank canvas. It is not completely blank as it contains already two blocks, an options block and a variable block. A double left mouse click on a block opens it so you can change its parameters. The options block lets you define some low level options and you can set a title for the canvas. We will leave everything at the default values. The variable block defines a global sample rate variable named samp rate. This is used in other blocks. Strictly speaking you don't need it, but it is practical and so we keep it. However, its value is way too low for FM signals so we change it to 10 million. The maximum value for HackRF1 is 20 million. If you set it too high, your computer may find it hard to keep up. Now we need an RF input device. In GRC this is called a source. There is no special HackRF1 source block. The SOAPY section has a SOAPY HackRF source, but that didn't work for me. The OSMOCON source did. The OSMO SDR front end no longer exists, but the block supports other SDR hardware as well, including HackRF1. Double clicking on it opens its properties and we see that the sample rate is set to samp rate, the name of the variable block GRC gave us. We only have one parameter to change here and that is the RF gain of channel 0 which is too high for FM radio signals. 
we can set it to zero. To quickly see if things are working, we can add a spectrum analyzer block to the canvas and connect it to the output of the RF source block. It is called the QT GUI frequency sync and is found in the instrumentation section of GRC. The way these blocks are named can be a bit confusing and it makes them sometimes hard to find. To connect the frequency sync to the RF source, simply click its input and then click the source's output. The other way around works too and so does drawing with the left mouse button pressed down. Note that you can only connect inputs and outputs of the same color, blue in this case. You can now click the play button with the little triangle on it uh, to execute the flow graph. If you didn't do so already, you must now save your canvas before you can continue. If all is well, a frequency plot will open. Fiddling with the antenna will produce slightly different results, but they may be difficult to see. To improve things a bit, we must configure the frequency plot. Click the stop button with the little square on it to kill the flow graph. Double click the frequency sync block to open its properties and set averaging to medium. Set the center frequency to the same value as the channel 0 frequency of the Osmocom source, which is 100 MHz in our case. Next click the config tab and set control panel to yes. Close the properties and click play. Now the frequency plot has a control panel and you can check the max hold box. Fiddling with the antenna becomes more visible. Now we know that we can receive RF signals. A nice thing to notice is that we had nothing to do to make the flow graph talk to HackRF1. There are no drivers to install, no ports to select, it's all plug and play. Note how we just had to set the center frequency of the frequency sync to the same value as that of the RF source, meaning that it is needed in at least two places. Therefore, if we replace it by a global variable, like the sample rate, we can set it in one place. Copy the sample rate variable block, open its properties and change the ID to center frac. Set the value to 100 MHz. Set the channel 0 frequency of the Osmocom source to center frac. Set the center frequency of the frequency sync to center frac. The two parameters are now connected. If we change the value of the center frac variable, it will also change in all the other blocks using it. To achieve something with SDR, you do of course need some knowledge about how radios work. The algorithms in SDR do the same things as the electronic circuits in an analog radio. So to receive an FM radio station, we must tune to it, demodulate and filter it, and make it audible. Tuning can be done with a so-called mixer or frequency multiplier. When done with quadrature or complex signals, it allows shifting frequencies up and down. In GRC, the blue inputs and outputs correspond to complex floating point signals that are suitable for mixing. The goal is to shift the frequency of interest to the center of the frequency plot, from which it is easier to extract. For tuning to a radio station, we therefore need a multiplier and another signal to control the frequency shift. A multiply block is available in the math operator section. For the tune signal, we can use a signal source block from the waveform generator section. FM radio stations have a known frequency, which we will call the channel frequency. As we want to be able to change this frequency easily, we create a global variable for it that we call channel frac. Where I live, there is a radio station at 96.7 MHz, so I put that value in channel frac. The mixer must shift the channel frequency to the center frequency, so the frequency of the signal source must be the difference of the two. 100 MHz minus 96.7 MHz is 3.3 MHz, and that is indeed the frequency shown in the signal source block. With the station at the center frequency, we must extract its signal and mix it down so that it can be demodulated. Extracting means filtering, and down converting in SDR corresponds to reducing or decimating the sample rate. The low pass filter from the filter section combines both operations in a single block. The FM band is divided in channels. The width varies per country, but it is typically around 200 kHz. A radio station sits in the middle of a channel, which means that it has a 100 kHz bandwidth on either side. Our sample rate is 10 MHz, so we set the decimation value of the filter block to 10 MHz divided by 200 kHz, which is 50. 
To extract the signal of interest, we don't need a super steep filter, so we set the filter's cutoff frequency to say 75 kHz, with a transition width of 25 kHz for a total bandwidth of 100 kHz. We now have an FM modulated quadrature signal with a sample rate of 200 kHz that we want to demodulate. We can use the FM demod block from the modulator section for this. The output of the demodulator is audio that we can feed into an audio sync, the computer's sound card. The problem we now run into is sample rate matching. The audio sync supports several sample rates that depend on your sound card. On my computer, the ratio of the possible audio sample rates to the 200 kHz input sample rate is a non integer value in all cases. But the FM demodulator can only decimate by an integer value. So how can we get this right? The solution is to insert a sample rate converter that can do fractional conversion. GRC has two options for this, a fractional resampler and a rational resampler. Since our input and output rates are integer values, we can use the rational resampler from the resampler section. For the best audio quality, we set the audio sample rate to 48 kHz. Then, if we make the demodulator work at 10 times that rate, at 480 kHz, we need a sample rate conversion of 480 to 200. This ratio can be simplified by finding the greatest common divisor of both values, which is 40. 480 divided by 40 equals 12, and 200 divided by 40 equals 5. So if we first upsample or interpolate by 12, and then downsample or decimate by 5, a rate of 200 kHz is turned into a rate of 480 kHz. We must set this rate in the FM demod block together with the decimation factor of 10 to ensure that the output rate matches the input rate of the audio sync. If you execute this flowchart with the channel frequency set to an existing FM radio station nearby, you should now hear the radio program. Isn't that cool? Hello tout le monde, c'est Julien sur Alouette. Allez, c'est reparti pour le 16 ce jeudi après. We can improve our radio a bit by adding a tune control so you can easily tune in to another radio station. For this we can use a QT GUI range block from the GUI widget section. Set its ID to channel frac. Fill in the parameters while making sure that they are all in range. Note that there is no point in setting a very small step value as most FM stations are on frequencies with only one decimal. You can choose a shape for the control, but slider plus counter is the most practical as it allows you to see the frequency as a number. Also you can type a frequency directly. Rename or delete the channel frac variable block as it is no longer needed and conflicts with the slider. You can now tune the radio like any other radio. Another improvement is adding a volume control. This is similar to the tune control and you can copy it and adjust its parameters. Rename the ID to audio gain. Now pick a multiply const from the math operator section and insert it between the FM demod block and the audio sync. Note how the wires are red. This is because the input and output of the multiplier are blue instead of orange. They are not of the same type. Open the multiplier's properties and set the I.O. type to float. Also set the field labeled constant to audio gain to connect it to the slider. Close the block and notice how the wires have turned black as all the audio in and outputs are now orange. That's it, execute the flowchart and enjoy your software defined FM radio receiver. For more information and SDR resources, please see the description below this video. See you next time!